Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this meeting started. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, what we're doing today is we're talking a little bit about audiation and we're talking a little bit about composition. So when I teach composition, one of the things that I've noticed is that students tend to have difficulty when they get to that eighth measure. So in order to get past that eight measure, we're going to talk a little bit about the secret today for that. But in order to get past that eight measure, you really have to understand what's going on in those initial eight measures. What I often tell my students that everything that you need to accomplish in the piece, everything that the piece is going to become, the hints and the clues for that often occur within the motives and the material that occurs in those first extremely important eight measures of your composition. Now, eight measures is kind of a general term. It could mean four measures, it could be 16, it could be 12. It's generally referring to the first phrase. And what I notice is a lot of composers that write that first phrase and they say, okay, great, I have this wonderful melody. Where do I go from here? And so that's really what I wanna to talk to you about today. I wanna to talk about a very basic process that you can use, that you can try out on your own at home. And it's just sort of an introduction to something that I do in my audiation course. So I'm teaching this audiation course right now where you learn to audiate. That is actually the goal so that you can use that as a tool so you don't have to be dependent upon your finger memory when you play the piano. If you don't have to be dependent on your technique, you can actually just sit there and you can play through individual sections, measures, things like this so that you can figure out how to proceed with the piece without wasting a lot of time or needing a physical instrument in front of you. It actually used to be that using a piano and especially a notation program was frowned upon for composers. The idea that if a composer had to use a piano, they were somehow less. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that standpoint. I think that the piano notation programs, these can all serve as useful tools for composing. But I do think if you don't have sort of the traditional ability to just audiate everything you're hearing, you're missing a very important part of your compositional procedure. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. This lecture that I'm providing today is really sort of snippets from my actual course, from the actual course that I teach. So I kind of took some important concepts and I really took it from several different lessons and I condensed it into one sort of mini lesson so you can get an idea of what we teach and where this course is actually going. So I'm going to share my screen with you now and you know this is live so we may have some issues but we'll deal with those as they come up and we're going to go ahead and get started here. So this is excerpted from two of the courses I offer. One's an audiation course and that one's very much focused on helping composers just learn to audiate. And also it shows a process for composing a musical work using the process of audiation. The other course I teach is sort of a more full featured course. It's very limited enrollment in that one, because in that one, I actually take you through you know, how you can construct your website, how you can sort of advertise your compositions, how you can publish and things like that. But we also deal with audiation and we have group composition lessons every other week and those have actually been a lot of fun because the composers will come in they'll show their work to the course and then everybody else in the class can actually offer comments and feedback which i think is really important because you get much more than just my interpretation of what you should do and you know when i teach composition i never tell people this is what you have to do here Instead, what I like to do is I like to show, much like we're going to talk about today, I like to show that all the material you need for your composition is in front of you. When you come up with a melody, most composers don't sit here and think, okay, I need to follow some voice leading guidelines. If I have a leap, I need to resolve in the opposite direction. I need to avoid augmented seconds. You know, if you're trying to write a tonal piece, these are some of the guidelines you might follow. If you do that, your music's going to be very stilted. And at least with the composers that I've taught over the last several decades, they don't usually create their melodies. They 
think about their melody, they sort of divine it in a way, and then once it's on the page, that's where the real work become, um, comes in because what we can actually do is we can start to take that melody and we can say, okay, th there's eight measures of information here, there is one measure that's really good. And then we can say, this is the basis for your piece. Now you need to really think about how this particular measure can be developed over the course of an entire composition. And I'll work with them to kind of show them how to develop their own ideas. So because of that, I end up teaching a wide variety of styles. I have jazz composers, I have blues, some people do film, other people are just interested in serious classical music, some students are interested in pop, some are interested in musical theater. There's all different types of styles because when you approach a composition not from this is how I teach, this is my style, I will make you do it as well, and you take it instead from approach that you're as a composition instructor you are not sort of the authority on that person's music, but what you are is an experienced second opinion that can help guide a student to realize their own compositions in their own way and in their own time, then I think you have what can make a very effective relationship. Because now you're teaching a composer how to think for themselves. That's like that old saying, teach a man to fish, you feed him, or yeah, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a night, teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. I very much believe that that approach applies to composition. So it's about opening up the student's perception of what is possible within their own music and also so they can learn how to actually compose their own music, how they can become more authentic with that. So mostly what I want to talk about today is this concept of motives and melody. Now you've probably heard motives and melody talked about in a lot of other venues, but we're going to do it in a little bit of a different way because I'm going to show you how when you create these motives and melody in a very effective way and sort of using an audiation process, then the composition starts to write itself. And I am a firm believer that the majority of compositional issues stem from the student, the composer, not being able to just sit there and think through their composition, much in the way you think through any other problem where we use language, or maybe you think in images, where you're trying to go through and say, okay, what are my possible solutions? How can I solve this issue that I have? You should be able to do the same thing with your compositions. We're just dealing with a more abstract medium. We're dealing with the medium of sound. And so audiation is the key to really thinking through your compositional issues and solving them. So I want to show you sort of a watered down process, but it's an effective process and it's one that you can use today and it's one that if you use, you will see some results. So we're going to get right into this and we're going to start talking about it. I'm going to kind of take you step by step, day by day, a process you can use to compose music and find a way to get past those eight measures because if you thought I was going to come here and say this is what you do in measure nine, that's that's not what this is about. What this is about is me showing you that once you really nail down the material of your music, which occurs in the first phrase, then the composition will naturally start to unfold for you. And I go into a lot more detail in the actual audiation course, but I'm going to kind of give you a preview of what to do. So the first thing I recommend you do is Get away from the piano. Don't use an instrument. Sit there. Try not to even sing. Close your eyes. If you hear some thoughts, just kind of let those thoughts go and try and get to a point where your mind is as still as possible. In a sense, it's a form of meditation, right? Because what you're doing in this particular assignment is you're trying to get to a point where you can just be calm and you can have the clarity of mind to actually hear whatever melody you're working on. So you sit down, you set a timer for 15 minutes, and you just start with a single note. Maybe you hear an A here. And you just play that A over and over again. And then maybe that A turns into something. Maybe it, you hear another note. And then you play it again, and you just, you're kind of hearing this in your mind. And you're like, okay, I don't like those notes, so you go, 
and you play around with that interval. And you keep doing this until a melody starts to form. So once you get the first semblance of a melody, you just play with it. You set that timer for 15 minutes and you just think through various possibilities for this melody. You don't judge it. Just anything that comes to you, you let come to you. And if you're not experienced with audiation, then it might be a fuzzy sound. It might not be that that clear. It might even be in your own voice. You know, we have techniques for getting you to actually hear the instruments you want to hear in greater clarity. But the important thing with audiation is simply that you can hear internally something a melody, something that you want to compose, right? And it can start with your own voice, it can start with you singing internally, but you want to try and keep it internally because we want to develop that skill. So ideally, when the timer goes off after 15 minutes, you open your eyes and you say, okay, I have some ideas now. So now you pull out your notation program, staff paper, however you want to do it, and spend about 45 minutes notating a melody and make it about eight measures long. So I'm not giving you a lot of guidance right now because I'm not trying to tell you to write a very specific melody with restrictions. I don't want you to write a melody like I would. I don't want you to follow or have to worry about voice leading guidelines. I want you to be able to just compose this very intuitively. So with your current level, you write the best melody you can and you do it in 15 minutes and you just kind of play it through in your head. Now you probably won't memorize it, but you've spent 15 minutes now playing around with ideas. So now you go to the piano, say if that's your instrument, and you find the first pitch. You know, you go around and say, okay, there, that was my first pitch. And I want it to go here. So you kind of write a D and an E. And then you go to the next step. You try and figure out what's the rhythm of the D and the E. And you work step by step if you're more advanced, you can do this much more quickly. You can just notate the entire melody. But you take whatever level you're at and you just start because you're never going to get really great at composing if you don't just start, right? And so once you have an eight measure melody, it doesn't have to be good. That's not the point of this. The point of this is to teach a process. So once you have your eight measure melody down, then it's time for your remaining 45 minutes, which you should have set a timer for, you're gonna go ahead and edit it. You're gonna spend the entire 45 minutes thinking about this melody. How can I change it? How can I improve it? So you'll enter dynamics. You wanna make sure there's a difference if I play something at piano or forte, right? If I play this, it's very different than this. And the dynamics could affect how that melody develops. So dynamics are important. You want to indicate how loud or soft it is. You also want to indicate any articulations. Should the music be played short? Should it be played accented? Should it have kind of a tenuto where, you know, it's a very heavy, pesante feel, you know? You need to articulate as much detail, detail as possible how you want the melody written. And you spend the full 45 minutes. And for a lot of you, you're not writing more than eight measures, you're gonna sit down and you're gonna say 45 minutes is a long time. I have my melody done immediately. You know, I, I got it finished when I was audiating it or it only took me 10 minutes to write down my melody. What do I do for the other 30, 35 minutes? The answer is you keep looking for ways to improve it. And once you feel like you have a really effective melody, if you have time, and you think this melody is completely done, then rewrite the melody three different ways. This is sort of an optional step, but I think it's pretty effective. So you take that melody, you try and rewrite it another time while keeping the essence of that melody. If it's a somber melody, it should stay somber. If it has particular motivic ideas, maybe you keep those, maybe you modify them a little bit. But you wanna try and rewrite the melody three different ways. So if people heard that melody, played three different times, they would be able to say, oh, okay, I recognize how they're similar. I can't quite put my finger on it, but they do seem similar to me. So that's day one. You do this, you spend an hour, and you're done. You put it away. If it 
crops up throughout the rest of the day if you start thinking about it again or even if you dream about it that's okay you can allow yourself to think about the melody but do not sit down and make any corrections for the rest of the day you're just kind of going about your day doing it whatever you need to do and you don't worry about your melody until day two so on the second day what you're going to do is set another time of 15 minutes this time you're going to audiate your melody if you only did one you're just audiating one for 15 minutes. You may need your eyes open so you can look at the notated music. And if you can't read the music, you may need to play it on your instrument first just to kind of memorize it. But you're gonna spend 15 minutes audiating your melody. If you're able to do two or three, then you just kind of alternate, divide your time up. So spend five minutes on one, another five on the second, another five on the third. So you hit that 15 minute mark. If you only have two, spend about seven minutes, seven or eight minutes on each one, okay? So then once that's done, you've been audiating it again. You're trying not to change it at this point though. Whatever you wrote down, you are restricting yourself. You're saying, I'm just gonna audiate what I wrote. You'll probably come up with ideas on how to improve it, but you're not gonna go ahead and do that at this point. You need to suppress the urge to change it because that suppressing the urge to change your melody actually makes you wanna change it in a lot of cases. You'll start to notice other ideas start to come in, just kind of push them away, focus on this melody, because eventually we want those additional ideas to come back. After we've written those first eight measures, we want them to come back, because now in measure nine, we unleash it and we allow it to sort of start developing. So that's kind of the process here, and I'm trying to do this very quickly, because I only have about you know 30 minutes to get through all this. So for the next 45 minutes, you want to find four distinct motives in your melody. So motives should only be three or four notes. So maybe you have something like this. That's a motive. It's very distinct. It has this minor six leap and it comes down. So that is very memorable. You hear this? If I play it a different octave registers. can start to change it a little bit but you're going to hear that motive every time it comes back you want to find four motives that are distinct and identifiable this is not a good motive that's just a major scale this isn't a great motive I mean it, it could be but you're gonna want all these motives to be somehow distinct okay so you spend 45 minutes just really looking at your melodies if you've only written one, you only have one to work with. If you've written three, you're finding a total of four from all three melodies. And when you're done, when you settle on, okay, these are my four favorite motives, you notate your motives. And then you're done for the day. On day three, you start to arrange them. So again, you start with audiation. You set a timer for 15 minutes, you audiate your motives, and then you stop. So if you have four motives, maybe you do about three or four minutes each, just so that you give each motive kind of equal time. So I sit here, I close my eyes, and maybe I look at this first motive here, which I'm gonna to point to. Let's get my laser pointer up. Okay, this first motive. So I heard it, now I close my eyes, and I go, it, the, I'm gonna pretend like this is what I'm hearing, right? So I, pl I play it over and over again, just like this in your mind, almost like a mantra and then a break, break. You do that for three or four minutes. You can go ahead and set your time for four if you wanna go up to 16 minutes, that's fine. Three if you only wanna do about 12, three and a half if you wanna get closer to 15. But you wanna maybe 315 if you wanna actually go for 15 minutes straight. But the idea here is spend at least three minutes just playing it on repeat. Then do it with the second one, the third, and the fourth. So that is your 15 minutes at the beginning of day three. Once you've done that, I want you to write them out by hand. Write out your four motives by hand. If you're not changing them, it's too late for that, in, in a sense. You're not gonna change them yet. So you write out your four motives like I've done. You could write them on note cards. You could write them on staff paper and then cut them. So they're individual cards like this, whatever you wanna do. You just wanna sort of write them out so you can start rearranging them. 
So this last step is going to rearrange them in different ways to see how the different arrangements change your melody. So here, I've got this motive followed by this motive. Maybe I play them in sequence. Okay, um, maybe I like that. Maybe I try these two in sequence. Okay, or maybe I want to see what these two sound like. These are building blocks. Motives are building blocks. And I, there's a quote which Mahler is known for saying. He said, you know, composing music is like playing with building blocks, where you use the same blocks over and over again. And he believed that these building blocks, they actually were obtained in childhood. But these are, I'm taking that quote a little bit loosely now, but these motives are actually building blocks. I want you to just try and, for 45 minutes, rearrange them. Play them in as many configurations as you can, just so that you're getting these motives in your head. That's really the goal of day three. You want these motives to be clearly established in your mind. So once you've done that, you've done your 45 minutes, you're done. You go on to, this is actually part of day three, so you're not actually done yet. So on day three, you know, you, you go through and you do your 15 minutes or you set a timer for 15 minutes, audiate your motives and then stop. Then you write out your motive by triplicate. I'm just going to kind of show you an example of that. So here we have three motives, right? They're all written out by triplicate. Now, the, in real life, these would be on little cards or pieces of paper that you can move around and readjust. So you can use any combination of these to try and create an eight measure melody. So here, let's say I use this motive twice, then I go here. I'm just going to play around until I've played approximately eight of them. And then where can I go from there? You play around with some ideas. That doesn't really work. So you kind of play around with these and you just keep rearranging them. The goal is not to write a melody at this point. The goal is to just become familiar with the motive. So this is kind of a little game you can play with them. So just rearrange them in various ways. See how the different arrangements change your melody. Sometimes it'll be boring. Sometimes the arrangement will make it sound really good. So that's kind of what we're going for here. So the next thing you're gonna do on the same day, day three, you've only got 45 minutes to do this. So you kind of have to pace yourself. You're going to arrange your ideas. So here I wrote three different versions. I used all 12 motives and I arranged them in three different ways, which is what I kind of want you to do. So that's my first one. I kind of audiate it and then I try my next version. That's also kind of a nice melody. Here's my third version. So that's a nice melody too. Now you'll notice there's only one, two, three versions of this idea. One, two, three versions of this idea. One, two, three versions of this idea. And one, two, three. So you may only create two melodies using your motives. You may create three. You may even create four where they're just three measure phrases. Doesn't really matter, but you don't want to use more than what you have in your cards. So you can't use this motive four times because you're only allowed to do it three times. So that's day three. You go through, kind of let's summarize this. You go through, first you write out your motives in triplicate by hand. Writing by hand is important. You have to do it by hand. Then you cut out each motive and place each one in front of you and then rearrange them in different ways to see how the different arrangements change the melody and then from there you try and create one two or three different melodies maybe even four using different arrangements of the available motives that you cut out okay so that is day three and again this is all just prep work it's not like if you don't follow this process perfectly it won't work it's it's not anything like that. It's simply 
restricting yourself, preventing yourself from doing anything other than what you wrote on day one and two right now. Day four is when you get your free composition. So for 10 minutes, you have your motives laid out in front of you. You want to audiate each motive, the sequence like I have here. I have four of them laid out. So you want to audiate each sequence that you created on day three and choose two or three. So if you did four options, only choose three. If you did three different permutations and only do two, but choose a couple that work really well together. So here I only chose two motives. I have, well, this one actually has all four motives. So you'd want to only choose like two or three that work well together. So here we've got one, two, three, four. I used all four of them. What you'd want to do is try and just stick to two motives. If you have to do four, again, it's not the end of the world. This is still just a process, but you want at this point to allow these motives to come together into one melody. And so you can repeat these more if you want to now. You can have this motive for all eight measures if you want, but it might be a little bit boring, right? But it's free composition now. So here I have this first melody. I don't have to go down the octave here. I don't have to go back to a C. Went to a G instead. Here, I don't have to go down to that C there. You know, you can start to play around with it. You can start to change the pitches a little bit because this is free composition, but you're still restricting yourself a bit to the basic rhythmic values from your initial motives. Also to the basic ascension and descension, right? So if the melody is going up, your melody should go up. If it's going down, your melody should go down. Here we have a huge leap, so there should be a huge leap. Whether you do the octave, or you do something else, or even this. That's fine. Just follow the contour of these initial motives because this is all about development. What you've been doing these first few four days is playing with some motives, becoming familiar with them, letting your brain kind of put them into its psyche, and you are reaching a point where you can start to develop these motives a little bit more effectively right so we can get creative with them that's all this is this is about putting some ideas in your head so your brain can get to work and write the rest of the piece for you in a much more intuitive way and i'm going through this fast uh this would actually be several several lessons if you took the actual course because we go step by step and so what i'm doing is in a way showing you a little bit of an end product prematurely all right, so the final day, it says day six. I cut out day five but because of time here. But for day six, you're going to notate it. So you write down your final melody. It's time exempt. It means it doesn't matter how much time you spend. You now sit there on day six. You come to it anew. You forget about everything you've done. You try and use similar motives to what you've been working on because that's sort of the goal. We want to have the brain concentrate on these ideas it hopefully you liked and you just play around with it so here let's say i have a four measure melody this is one construction of the melody i wrote it like this okay i didn't really like it so i'm audiating it and i change it a little bit i end up making this my final melody. Right? And so notice I added articulations. I added slurs. I added staccato. I added dynamics. So I changed the sforzando. I didn't like it anymore. So I made all these changes to my melody. Now I have a complete melody and I have taught myself my melody in the process. I have essentially said, okay, look, these are your materials. You have now worked with them for about a week. You are now familiar with these materials. At this point, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. And we, we only have a few minutes to talk about this, but from this point, what you do is you audiate. 
30 minutes a day and you spend time just playing this melody over and over again if it changes this point that's okay what you want to do is let it change let it do what it wants to do free it to do whatever it decides is right right and you don't necessarily have to notate anything just spend a couple days and when I do this myself I, I actually spend weeks or months on a single melody because I want it to develop on its own I don't want to force anything I don't want to say I'm gonna fit you into this form or I'm gonna fit you into this mold that's what happens later that's the editing part of the, of the process I don't want you to think that everything's intuitive and we never apply our intellect we do but that's something that comes later when you're initially creating the piece you just want to approach this very intuitively very calmly very easily once you have an idea notated and the entire composition is essentially flushed out then you can go back and you can start to think about other ways to improve it and I mean this is a huge topic so in the audiation course that I teach we talk about the next steps like how to actually go past that eight measure how this groundwork has been laid and you can start to improve what you're doing with various techniques now you may not even need the course because with this right here this technique right here if you follow kind of the seven day process and you can take one day and turn it into a week if you want you know you can expand the process if you want if you want to spend six weeks on this great but what you'll find is just this process alone will help you to see where the piece wants to go and you know if you take the actual course what we'll do is i'll give you additional information i'll say okay now this is how we think about the form this is how we fix it this is how we find the first eight measures tells us the form of the piece arnold schoenberg was famous for saying this he said you know the harmony the melody the form they're all found within that initial seed that initial idea and it's true i can look at an idea from a student and i know how long the piece is going to be and that's something that you can develop too but it's just something that takes a little bit of a process a little bit of guidance in the beginning and then you can go out and you can do it on your own so this is just something that uh, I hope was helpful for you it if you follow this process you'll probably notice that you get past that eight measure more effectively because all of a sudden on day seven we'll call it day seven but it could be week seven could even be month seven you'll notice that the melody starts to unfold itself the piece starts to unfold itself and you just kind of go incrementally and this is something we talk in a lot more detail about in the audiation course so even though it is meant for audiation I teach audiation through composition so it's really both it's composition and audiation so just let me know if you have any questions I'd love to talk to anybody further about this otherwise I hope that you found this useful and you can apply it to your own toolbox and just let me know what you thought in the comments and Hopefully I'll talk to some of you later and see how you've kind of modified this and use it in your own process. Thank you.